Good evening guys and welcome to Beer Manners. As you can see, we're in a very different surrounding today. I've got some different tools and appliances with me, which can mean only one thing. We're talking about whiskey. Okay, so I've been promising you guys some different content for a while now. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I was going to attempt to do a whiskey review. This won't be as much of a whiskey review, more just me talking about whiskey, I suppose. Um, I don't want to actually review it because I'm a bit of a believer in things like whiskies and cigars. Anything with notes is very much down to personal preference. So I wouldn't want to sway anyone off of anything just on my experiences off of it or to push someone towards something because of my experiences of it. But, you know, I wanted to do this because I'm a big whiskey lover. I've got a reasonably decent whiskey, whiskey display. Those that follow me on different media platforms would have seen pictures of my whiskey shelves and they, I, I often have a whiskey. I'm, I'm very much a whiskey guy. I, I tend to not drink whiskey to get drunk on. Um, whiskey for me is more of a drink to have for enjoyment. There'll be people watching this that think, no, that's, that's not true at all. <laughs> but you know, if, over the years as I've got older, wider and wiser, I have started to learn that whiskey is definitely for me something to savour and enjoy. A lot of people know as well by now that I often tend to journal my whiskies and my cigars as well. It's something I get a bit of enjoyment out, it's helped me to learn a lot about them as I go and helped me to get a better experience of what I would class as a hobby, I suppose. So the main thing is, what is today's whiskey of choice? So I could have picked loads of whiskies from my selection, there's some more exciting ones than what I've gone for potentially. Uh, there's some different ones, there's some lesser ones, but I want to do more whiskey content going forward. Depending on how this video does, depending on the interaction and what you guys think, then, and if you want to see more, please let me know. You know, as always, like, subscribe, share, comment, because then I know going forward what you guys want to see. But yeah, fingers crossed, this is something that goes down well with all of you, and I can do more of going forward. So, I don't think many people are going to need an introduction for this one. A lot of you can spot, I know I've gone for cinematics, so it's a little bit blurred. I'll try and get a closer picture to the camera for you. So hopefully you can see from there that what we've got today is Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now Johnny Walker is a brand that like I say, it should need little introduction. There's not many places you can go without seeing a Johnny Walker bottle. Blue Label is definitely up there with one of their more premium blends. It's not the most expensive you can get. You can get Blue Label Ghost, which is far more expensive than this. You can get Platinum, you can get slightly, you can get Yeared and Aged, um, Johnny Walkers as well. But I picked this one mainly because of a few reasons really. One is that anyone that ever comes into my house and sees this or sees it in the office or notices it on the videos, always comments on it because it's such a big name in the whiskey in the whiskey world. Now, <clears throat> let's start with opening it. I'll start sipping it, let the video flow, and I'll start talking more about it from there. First thing you're gonna get with this, and this is one of the things I like most about it, it's, it's a nice looking bottle. It's a very heavy bottle. You can feel it's very thick. That's slightly annoying, so apologies for that. Don't know why they put that on there, but this is one of my favorite things. I never get bored of this sound. Love it, I absolutely love it. Now you can also see guys, I've brought a couple of glasses with me for this because I'm gonna talk briefly on the glasses as we're going through as well. Now for my first experience, I'm gonna put this and pour this into, sorry, what I would call my Glen Caron. Now again, coming back to the whiskey to start with, so a little bit of an introduction into the Johnny Walker Blue Label. Johnny Walker Blue Label is what is known as a blended whiskey. Now there's gonna be lots of people watching this video and this is one thing that I'm not really for, if I'm honest. There's gonna be people watching this thinking, why don't you go for a malt, I'm a malt guy. There'll be the bourbon drinkers thinking, why don't you go for a bourbon. There'll be the few handful of blended drinkers going, yay, it's a blended. But that's why I picked this, because it's slightly con controversial. Um, so I wanted to do it because I just thought it wouldn't be so typical of me to do. A blended whiskey is reasonably self-explanatory. It is a mixture of, I won't say different whiskies because it's not always different whiskies. Sometimes it's different whiskies and other alcohols. Um, depending on the quality of the blended, something like Ballantines, something like Johnny Walker, you're blended there. What this is, this is a blend of various different malts and scotch whiskies. You could argue that there's not as much potential time goes into a blended. It, 
There's lots of arguments for and against. It depends on the molds that have gone in it. They've potentially been aged. It's not quite the same process as you'd get in a single malt scotch. But at the same time, you could argue that in a way there's more skill goes into a blended because it's blending things together to get them to work. So it, it, the name's in the title, you know, it's blended. And when you go for a brand like Valentine's or Johnny Walker, they've got to be really super consistent with their blending as well. And that takes some real skill, you know, to blend these different things and get the exact same amounts, get it all to taste. Because often if you get things, particularly your bourbons, when they're batched, they can taste slightly different from time to time. Things can vary. Sometimes the same with scotch as well. Blended has really got, if you're a high-end blend that charges a lot, which these guys do, I mean, th this is, this is close to £200 a bottle, depending on where you get it from. I'll post a link in this later on to an Amazon because they're currently the cheapest I can find it. Um, sometimes they're quite cheap in whiskey exchange, but you, you could pay in excess of £200 for this one. So they've got, they've got a lot of pressure there to make it some consistent and go well together. So, like I say, I've given you a free, few reasons as to why I chose the Johnny Walker Blue. It's name, it's pulling power as a drink, the fact that it's a blended, which is slightly controversial in itself, and with the differences between the, the whiskey lovers, the scotch lovers, the malt lovers, um, the bourbon lovers, I'm what I would call a new age drinker. I could not care two shits about what you like. I will drink whatever whiskey I fancy. If you were to come to my house now and have a couple of whiskies with me, you'd see quite quickly that I've got some very nice malts, I've got some very nice islas, I've got bourbons, I've got blended, you know, I've got a little bit of everything up there. I like to have a, a, a different display and I'm a mood drinker. It's what my mood takes me to. So, you know, if you're someone that is like, no, no, it's all scotch, scotch is real whiskey, sorry, malt is single, is real whiskey. That's not for me personally. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I'm one of these guys that likes to drink a mix of whiskies depending on the mood I'm in. So, <clears throat> the other thing to come to with this before I start sniffing some into the palate is there's, there's lots of other differences. What you'll typically get with a blended whiskey is, and again, this, this some people argue this isn't typical, but it kind of is, particularly for the cheaper ones. They're normally, there's normally frustrations within the community because they're made with grain. Grain is the, the sort of the cheaper of the granules that you can use for it. Not all of the market depends on the malt, malt that's used, um, whereas malt on the other hand is always 100% or nearly always 100% barley, which is a lot more expensive. But again, this is where Johnny Walker Blue Label, which is why I've picked this, because this is to, this is a mix of decent quality malts together. And you could almost, it, it, it's, it's a lot of money for a reason. So before I go too much further down that rabbit hole, let's start getting onto the notes of this. Now the reason I've brought my very girly Glen Carn across is because, you know, I think this is the best way to experience whiskey. And what I mean by that is to get the full, the full goodness out of it and the full experience out of it, like I say. Your sort of more tumbler style glass, you, you'll see a lot of whiskey drinkers using these. These aren't designed for whiskey. Anything with curves, you can get like more sipping whiskey glasses that are a slightly wider bottom, so to speak, and a less narrow neck. Um, but these aren't really for whiskey. They're good for social drinking and having a large amount, but again, if you were to really research this, that's not what they're for. But I've got them and I use them for whiskey. This is what I'll use if I'm sitting in the lounge. Tomorrow, I'll be watching the boxing. I'll be drinking a less expensive whiskey and more just drinking whiskey through this because I could have more of it at a time. I've got quite a lot of Glen Carans floating around and you know, if, if people come around mine that are whiskey lovers and want to try that, then what I'll normally do is get a few of these out. And what these are good for, you saw me pour that in there, but straight away they've got that nice, they've got that nice wide bottom, like I said, they're quite tall. They're, they're small glasses, so you only need to put a small amount in there. But the first thing you want to do is give it a bit of a swirl, and you can see with this, you'll start to see a little bit about the whiskey by doing this. You'll see if it leaves a slightly greasy or oily remnants around the glass. In some cases that could potentially show a maybe potentially cheaper whiskey. Um, because what that could mean is less of an alcohol content and the alcohol is the pureness, which is also often where proof comes into things as well. This isn't a particularly high proof. As a, as a rule, if I'm trying a new whiskey that I know nothing about and have no read-ups for, I'll go for a higher proof, which in UK terms is percent, which you, you'd want to be looking sort of 44% upwards. Um, if you're trying something new, again, it's just because it's got the higher alcohol content, which normally leads to a 
better tasting experience. However, with sometimes the lower proof alcohol content, you could potentially get more tastes in there. But if you've got a, if you've got a more trained palate, then you're gonna to lean towards the higher proof. So coming back to this, you can see I've swirled it around a few times and you know you can see that it's it's almost quite clear. Again, I apologize if I'm doing this on cinematic, so you're not gonna get very good close-ups of this. But um, it's very clear. Also by doing this, what you do is with this long neck, you can really get the smell of the whiskey. Now, when you're using one of these, you really wanna get your nose right in there. You don't wanna be getting your nose onto the whiskey, obviously, but you wanna get your nose right in there. And you wanna give it a very slow, a very deep smell. Just take your time with it and try and figure it out. Look into the distance, look somewhere else, just focus and try and figure out what you can get. And the joy of notes is you can read the notes along with the whiskies as to what they say they are, what you get on the nose, what you get in the palate. But there's no right or wrong with this. If you get something completely different, then it's right for you. This is the joy of doing anything where you can get to learn about palates, like I say, cigars, whiskey, even coffee to a degree. And this is why I'm into these sort of things. So let's get back to this then. So on the nose for me, I would say this is very, very floral on the nose. Slightly smoky. But yeah, mainly floral, quite smoky. Very steamed up now. And maybe, maybe a hint of tobacco in there. Now, that's what I'm getting on the nose. When you're new to this, you might find the nose might overwhelm what you get in your taste. As you get more experience, you'll separate the two. But then what you want to do from here is get the taste of it. Now, I would always recommend when you're drinking a nice whiskey, try not to drink anything or eat anything too strong before because you don't want to ruin your palate. And this is like the virgin sip, so to speak. It's that first sip which you're really going to get everything from it. So you want to take a generous sip, hold it in your mouth, potentially swirl it around. Some people swish it in their teeth. But you want to get it all in that palate to get all the different temptations from it. So. So, on the taste of this, I would say that initially I'm getting exactly what I got on the nose of this. You're really getting that strong floral taste to this. But as it swishes around, as it gets to the sides of your mouth, you start to get different tastes coming in. Now again, I'm not reading what they've written, I'm, I'm reading what I'm getting from this. I'm, I'm not reading, I'm telling you what I'm getting from this. So from there, now that it's going down a little bit, the, the sort of second coming notes I'm getting from this more than anything else are smokiness and a little bit of tobacco. So you notice this time I've not swished it around and swirled it so much. I've lined my mouth. Now I've just given it a natural sip. Now this is where it starts to change because from this I've got more sweetness from it. And it's not a direct sweetness, it's almost like a, a syrupy, not syrup. I'd say it's almost, it's almost like honey. It's almost a honey type taste. There's a slight bitter in there that you'd potentially get from like a really dark chocolate. Um, and again, with that floral as well. And yeah. Yeah, about the same with that. Now, this is why I like Blue Label. I think a lot of whiskey drinkers might sneer at it, and here's why. Because even I sneered at this. It took me a long time to buy this. I've tried to build my collection up. It's something I kept looking at. There's such so much hype about it. I wouldn't normally spend this much on a whiskey because you just don't have to. And that's where the turning the nose up comes, in all honesty, is it is an expensive whiskey. I believe that once I finish this, I'll probably get another one. I can't, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to contradict myself all over the place with this drink. I just know I am because it's such a confusing one for me. If, the minute it's gone, I'm going to buy another one. But I've also got to sit here and be honest and look at what else I've got in my cupboard and say, if you were to come to me now and say, look, Jason, I, 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 that's a lot of money. Like it's £170 on Amazon right now, ish, £170. Is it worth it? You know, I, I, that's, that's all my spare money. That, that's my spare money for the month gone. What I would be inclined to do is say, for 170 quid, you could get a really nice Japanese blended whiskey. 
you could get yourself a really nice malt and a really nice bourbon and still have some money left over. So, you know, that's the problem with this because I think you're paying a lot for the label. Another drink that I'll hopefully do a video on is Macallan. Macallan's exactly the same. I've always got Macallan, I love Macallan, but it's not a go-to because, and, and no disrespect to Macallan and Johnny Walker, and I don't know why I'm saying that because they're not gonna watch this in a million years, but you're, you're paying a premium for the name over the quality of the whiskey. But because I'm a whiskey guy and I work hard for my hobbies and for the things I like and for my vices, I want to have these nice ones there. You can see I've not drunk much of this and this is the same bottle I've had for a year and a half now. Um, because this is more like I say for myself, I don't tend to even get this out loads. There's a few people, there's a few friends of mine, probably not even a few, maybe a couple of friends of mine I've let try this. But it's not a drink I get out very often because I think you need to appreciate it. It's a bit too expensive just to be thrown around. So, so yeah, so that's my experience. I do think this is a very enjoyable drink. Every time I have it, I do really enjoy it. You know, as it's going down now, it's become a lot more smooth. It, the sweetness is coming through with it more now. There's not much sweetness to this, but again, it's, it's just an all round nice drink because you do constantly get the mix of the sweetness, the bitter, the smoke, and that is a talent in itself, and that is what I like about blended. I, I personally think that a good blended, the only, if you want a, if you want to taste sensation in your mouth, if you want your mouth to do things you just didn't know it was capable of doing, the only other whiskies I would say can push this or push a good blended for that are some of the real strong Islas. But Anyone who drinks whiskies will know you want to go for a strong Isla. Like I've got at the moment in my cupboard, I've got Ardbeg Ugadal. It's insanely nice. I absolutely love it. But you know, you have you have one sip of that, and your taste buds are gone. You, you, you want to smoke the world's strongest cigar, all you're going to taste is Ugadal. You know that drink is nicknamed Seagull's Armpit and Mermaid's Purse for a reason. It's very, it's very sea-like, very salty. It's insanely peaty, but you just have so much happen in your mouth. Not the, quite the same as this, that's like almost an explosion. And I just, the first time I ever tried it, I was like, oh God, am I just gonna pretend I wanna like this? Am I just trying to get man points now for saying I like it? But then I just can't help go back to it. It's just an insanely nice drink. But this on the other hand, like I say, this is maybe more complex, if I dare say that. And it sounds like I'm really big up blended. So I'm gonna be honest, they're not my favorite. You know, I, I like this. Um, one of the Japanese ones, Hibiki Harmony, I very much like. I'm reasonably new to blendeds. Um, I'm not new, but I'm quite. I'm not as experienced. Valentine's is one that I need to try, but yet to, and you know, to get a nice one to go for like 18 upwards in age. You know, it's going to cost a lot more than this. But you know, I feel like I'd always want to have a blended because they're just very different. It's not a reach to. It's not a go to for me. You know, I'd, I'd always go for this. Not always, but I'd usually go for a malt first, a bourbon second. But again, there is always a place for blended in my heart, in my whiskey cabinet, and within my palate. So you know, it like it, it, the other things of this is it, the bodies of it. it. It's the body of the drink, the body of an alcohol, the body of a whiskey is kind of the experience in the mouth. But it can't be confused with the taste. It's that experience of it, almost how it just opens up in, in your mouth. And I would say that this for a body point of view, I mean, if you're novice to drinking and you try this, I think you'd, you'd argue it's full. When you've tried some of the stronger stuff like the Islas and some of the stronger sc scotches and things like that, um, that pings just down a peg or two. So I'd say from a body point of view, for the overall experience in your mouth, it's medium to full, which is good, it's very enjoyable. You want. If you want to enjoy, like I say, the full experiences of whiskey, that's what you do. You know, if, if I want to just get drunk, I would reach for a Wild Turkey or a Glen Village 12 or something like that, something far more affordable. But like I say, this is, I wouldn't get this out and drink this in the night. I'd get it to have one or two with a friend, put it back, get the next one out, talk about it, experience it. You'd want it to last. So I'd say it's a medium to full body. Mm, almost dead medium for richness. So you've got quite a lot going on with this. It really is an enjoyable drink, you know. But like I say, it's the most honest I can be. If you can afford to get yourself a Johnny Walker Blue Label, again, it's a very nice bottle. It's almost worth it just for the pot. 
It is a very, very enjoyable drink. I sadly can't say that I think it's worth the money, but I think it's worth owning in a cupboard and in a display if you're a connoisseur of whiskies and you collect nice whiskies. So guys, it's gone on for just over 20 minutes, a bit longer than I wanted to do, but it's my first my first whiskey talk, my first whiskey review. So please be gentle with me. But again, with this one, because I've never done anything like this, please do comment, please do say something. If, if, if this is something you're not interested in, please let me know, because I won't waste your time or mine with it. If you want to see more stuff like this, then also please let me know, because I've got lots of other whiskeys, rums, and tequilas. I'm a very big tequila man, and I know not a lot of people out there know a lot about tequila, so I'm more than happy to share my knowledge with that as well. I'm not an expert by any means, I'm still learning this, but this video is more for a bit of fun, to give you an insight into some of my enjoyments, to let my hair down a bit more and talk about something that's no pressure because it's something I get enjoyment in. I'm more than happy to do live videos with this going forward if it's something people would like to see so that you can join in and ask some questions. I'd even be happy to do maybe a live group tasting one day, um, potential podcast so to speak. But like I say guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if this has been any good. Be straight with me, I'd rather you're honest. I'm gonna go and drink some more of this. I'm gonna go and enjoy it. You have a good day, you have a top weekend, and I'll catch you all on the next video.